Hi, let us discuss the solution of this problem. In this problem, we are given n different candies. And in this, if you buy one candy, then you can buy k other candies for free. Okay, so you just buy the cost of one and the rest k are free. Now you are provided with the minimum amount of money you have to spend to buy all the n different candies. So you just need to tell the minimum amount that is to be spent to buy all the candies and the maximum amount of money you need to spend to buy all the number of candies. Okay. So now let us try to solve this problem. In the sample test case given, we have said that if we buy one candy, we can get two candies for free. So what we would do is to get the minimum cost, we can buy this one. Okay. One is bought and then we can buy the rest 2 and 3 for free. So, 3 and 4. Okay, 3 and 4 can be bought for free. So, 1 is done. Then we can buy the next 2 that is remaining. And as there are no other candies, so we, can, we don't need to buy it. So, the resultant value to this is 3 itself. This is the minimum value. Now, we want to take out the maximum value. So, if we want to take out the maximum value, we can go and buy this item first okay so 4 and then we just exclude this why because they are minimum and we need we can buy two other candies for free so we don't need to pay for them then the remaining that is 3 so it is 7 so the resultant value is 3 and 7 is returned as a vector itself okay so now let us try to think how we can solve this problem now to solve this problem, let us first see the case for the minimum value and then we would discuss for the maximum value. So if we want the minimum resultant value, then just try to think in this way. That minimum value, if we want to spend minimum value, then we should buy the cheapest item first. Okay. So we would buy the cheapest. Okay. Buy the cheap. If we want the minimum value. Then what can be there? Now, let us think. So, if we want the minimum value, then we would buy the cheap and the expensive items can be got for free. So, why would if we want to spend way more or less, then the expensive items can be plugged into that free offer. So, in this free section, that is K-free items, we would club the costly items. Okay, this is it. Now, after this also, the element might remain. Might be the case. So, we would first buy the most cheapest. Then we would take the next most cheapest. That is, second most cheapest. And then we would buy the second most K costly items. This is what we would do. Okay. Now, let us discuss for the maximum value. Now, for the maximum value, it is just the vice versa of it. Why? Because if we want the maximum values, then we would buy the most expensive one and the, and the cheap items can be clubbed in the free section. This is what we can do. Now, let us see how to do this in terms of programming. Now, we need the first most cheapest item. Then we need the second most cheapest item. And we want the costly item, then second costly item. We can do that. Now, see, there are two options to do that. Either we take all those elements and enter into the priority queue or a set or a multi set, or we can just use the sorting. So, when are the two scenarios when these are used? So, if the element is static, that is, the value is not changing in the further iteration, then we need to use sorting. So, I would just write static, and then if the values are changing at each point and you need to insert and delete also. So, if either of the condition or both of the condition, we would use something known as priority queue, multi set, and these all things. Okay. So, now we would just use sorting. Now, why we are prioritizing sorting over those priority queue and set and all? Why? Because sorting takes a constant, constant space. Okay. Why constant space? Because it, if we use an in place sorting algorithm, then the elements would be sorted in the array itself and no auxiliary space is required. 
But if we use an external data structure like map or priority queue, then a new data structure is included. But let's talk about the time complexity too. Talking about the time complexity too, the each insertion, deletion, and searching roughly cost you around a login operation. So if you insert or delete or something, do this kind of operation for n elements, then it would be n log n. And the time complexity to sort n elements is also n log n if we use much shorter quick shot. Okay. So in terms of time complexity, both are same. But to save on space, we should first prioritize over sorting than these all things. Okay. So we would move forward with sorting. Now let us see the implementation and you would get the better idea of it. Now let us start the implementation. The first thing we would do is we would have something known as int min mn is equal to 0 and mx is equal to 0. As the name of the variable suggests, mn would store the minimum amount that is required and mx would store the maximum amount that is required. Now we would start sorting this a and a plus n. Now the whole array is sorted where the front element, the 0th index would have the smallest and the last element would have the maximum element. So we need to take how many candies, k candies. So the thing is, how many candies do we need to buy? There is a confusion here. So let us go again back to the board itself. How many candies we need to buy? So suppose we have four items. That is one, two, three, and four. So we would buy, and k is equal to two. So we know that we need to buy one, and then we would get two. So if we make divide this in terms of three, then we would know how many we need to buy. Okay. So we can see that if we divide it with k plus one, why k plus one? Because one is to be bought in groups of k plus one, and the remaining as one more, and we just need to buy that then this would tell us this. So we can see that if we divide, if we divide by k plus 1 and even after that some values are remaining, then we need to buy one more. Why one more? If there is one element, we would buy this. If there is two elements, suppose 4 and 5, suppose there is two elements remaining, then what we would do is we would buy the first item and the next item would be bought in the free section. Now if there are three items, it would be counted in this only. This is what we would do. So, number of values we need to buy is n divided by k plus 1. Okay. Now, if n modulo k plus 1 is not equal to 0, that means some elements are remaining, then the value would be incremented. Then we would go down and then we would count the values. Okay. So, for the minimum value int i is equal to 0, i is less than n. Why i is less than n? Because we need to first check if it is within the boundary or not. Because it might be the case that we need to buy 100 items, but the number of elements that we have already is just 2 or 3. Okay. And i is less than val also. And then i plus plus. And then mn plus equals to a of i itself. Then what we can do is now we want the maximum element. Now there are two scenarios for this. So I would do, I would, I would perform this first scenario and the second scenario I would explain you. So reverse a and a plus n. This would reverse the element and now the first element would contain the maximum element. So again we need, we would go to the same and i is equals to zero or we would just copy this for loop itself and change from mn to mx. Okay, change from mn to mx. And then it's done, and we would return it mn and mx itself. Now let us do the dry run for the sample test case. Okay. And yes, we got an AC. Now let us do the dry run of this, and then I would show you one more to this. So now, if we start the iteration, now this sorting would take n log n okay this are two constant operation so big o of one then we would iterate on the for loop so at max k is equals to zero and we need to buy all the elements that is why this is big o of n operation why because for each operation we are just doing a constant operation addition or not now this is reverse this is again big o of n and this is again big o of n itself okay so the upper bound to this is n log n and the space complexity is we are 
we are modifying the array itself and we are just using uh, variables variables take constant space so in terms of space complexity this is constant okay now a simple modification which you can do is instead of instead of this reversing thing you can directly start taking val elements from the back itself so you don't need to do big of an operation you can directly use a for loop start the iteration from n minus 1 and you can go till the elements there so that's it for today thank you and have a nice day